I thought it was pretty cool. It was a coffee place, but remember, people used to always get mad at the coffee. Yeah. Like, oh, it sucks. It's not even good. It's too strong. It tastes burned, this and that. So when he went to Italy, he noticed that people really take pride in their coffee, the way they make their espressos, the baristas, all that stuff. So he said, I need to rebrand this. And if you notice now, every single Starbucks is called Starbucks coffee. It's not just called Starbucks anymore. And he really put, now he calls his people baristas. Like, because it's all about the stuff. It's all about the coffee. And then, yes, he sells all this other stuff on the side. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's like he he reinvented that brand of, of Starbucks to cater to what exactly he saw in Italy, you know? I'm just responding to this email real quick. My bad, bro. <laughs> just give me two seconds because I really got to respond to this guy. You know what? I don't get it. Like... How do you expect to do good in business if you don't want to put the time in on how to do good? Like, I didn't just learn how to do good. I didn't, I didn't just, I wasn't born and all of a sudden I know exactly what I'm doing. Like, I, that's what, you know, you feel me? Like, I never, I never understood when people are like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, that, you don't know how to do it because you didn't apply yourself on how to do it. I wasn't born learning how to, we weren't born learning how to text message, right? We learned how to text message. It's the simplest things like that. These are things that are fundamentals. When you're owning a business, you have to keep educating yourself. I just don't get why people don't. It makes no sense to me. And it's like, when you have a will, you're gonna make it work. I just don't understand some of these guys that they just, I don't know, man, they just act like, like it's gonna just come to them for, for without them even trying, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta put in the work. And I don't wanna seem like all these other business guys that say, oh, hard work and dedication is what leads to success. But there's a reason why they all say it, because it's true. When it comes down to it though, if you don't have the passion for it and you're not and you're not willing to put in the work, then you ain't going nowhere. And that's for sure. That is a hundred percent sure. Alright, so one thing I definitely didn't think I was gonna happen is me being the barber industry for the rest of my life. Uh, I started off in retail while I was going to college. Uh, I went to college for business administration and marketing. Um, in the meantime, uh, after Retail, I actually got a job as a part-time teller at a bank and I climbed a ladder there and eventually became the manager. And then I went back into the retail industry and became the vice president of a retail soccer team. And uh, I always loved managing and being uh, in business and, and kind of um, seeing business grow and seeing myself grow in the businesses. At this time, in the meantime, uh, my brother had opened up his first shop in 2009. Uh, and about four years later, we opened up the second shop together, and I kind of just started getting addicted to like building. You know, that was my that was my addiction. Uh, the barber industry is awesome, and I grew a, a, a great love for it. But in the beginning, it was just all about building. That's what I wanted to do. That's my passion is building. And as the years went by, I noticed that uh, I really can help barbers to be better. Not only my own barbers but also other barbers. Uh, to me, competition is not something that I get scared of. Uh, I, will, I will help my, my competitor, uh, because in the end, uh, it's all about execution as well. I can tell you how to do things and what to do, but if you don't execute on it properly, then that's on you. And if you do, then all power to you, man. That's, that you, you deserve to do well. We started the first shop in 2009, and now, almost 10 years later, we have seven great locations and growing. We were able to do this with a great team of barbers that have grown with us and have, a couple have partnered up with us. Um, and we just constantly have a culture of growth and showing our barbers growth. And it's real exciting because the future is definitely gonna be very exciting. Um, so now, because of all the things that we've gone through in the past 10 years of just the barber industry, you know, especially the barber industry is like, you know, it's not the same as a lot of other, other industries. There's different hurdles, especially with licensing and stuff like that. And a lot of barbers came up from nothing. And sometimes when you come up from nothing, it, you're not always educated on how to really run business properly. So you may be really good at cutting hair, but cutting hair is just a part of it when you own a shop. The rest of it is all business. You have to learn how to own a business and run a business and have employees in order for you to really succeed. And I think that that's what the barbers, a lot of barbers uh, lack. And that's where I felt that I really could change the game and, and help a lot of barbers out, not only shop owners, but also barbers, 
to really do well and be businessmen in the barber industry. It's not as difficult as people make it out to be and what you need to do is just educate yourself and a lot of people educate you know books are not for everyone and watching inspirational videos is not for everyone sometimes you just need that one-on-one -on -one. and that's what I've been providing to these barbers recently and honestly I, I've my passion of building has tripled now even more because now I get really excited when I see results not only my own results because I know I can build and I know my team can build but now it, it makes me feel even better when a barber out in Texas seeks out my my uh, consulting and expertise, and then a month later, two months later, they'll reach out to me and be like, "Man, this is awesome! Everything that you told me to do, I put in place. Let's keep talking." And I'll consult them on a monthly basis. Some of them I'm even consulting on a weekly basis. Um, everyone needs a coach, okay? You need a life coach, all right? When you're a child, who's your life coach? Your parent. One of the biggest problems and questions that I... No, let me repeat that one yeah. second. Alright, so one of the biggest questions I get is, how do you get so many barbers to work for you? You got seven shops, how do you get these barbers? Well, first of all, it wasn't always easy. You know, remember, at one point I did have one shop, two shops, three shops. And it's not easy, even now. I'm not going to say it's easy to get barbers, but it's definitely easier. And it's not so much of the fact that we have seven locations that is a reason why we get so many barbers. It's more of the culture that we're creating. We have the reputation of if you go to City Image, you're gonna do well, you're gonna grow. They do things the right way. They educate you. It's a business, it's not just a shop. It's not just a name with seven locations. It's a business with seven locations and they're growing. I wanna be a part of this growth. I know that when the day comes, I'm going to get paid on time. I know that if I need help with something, they're going to be there for me. I know that they're going to keep me accountable to grow in this industry. And that's the easiest way to get barbers, is to make sure you show them growth, that you have a culture, that you're not just putting them in a chair and kind of them leaving, leaving them alone, and they're not going to see you anymore for a month, two months. Especially you barbers that have a couple locations, it's easy for that to happen, especially if you're cutting in one location. Great, you, you did well in one location, you opened up a second, you got a manager in there, but they need to see your face. If they don't see your face, then they don't know who is in charge and they don't know who's going to hold them accountable for something. So I guess that's the, that's the main thing. I think the reason why a lot of barbers want to open up their own shop is because they just don't have the right structure where they're working and they feel like, man, I, I can't stand my boss. He's, you know, he, he doesn't do things the right way. He never shows up on time himself. How am I going to have to show up on time if he doesn't show up on time? All these different hurdles that they go after, that they go, that they go, um, that they have to go through and then they feel like, you know what, I'm just going to open it up myself. and and. They have no idea what it takes to open up a business, though, and that's the thing. Is that's where they need coaching, like 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 someone like me or any business coach to kind of tell them, like, listen, if you're ready to open up your own business, these are the things that you have to keep into account. It's not just opening up the doors. There's a lot of bills, a lot of hidden bills that you don't realize when you are working for somewhere. You know, payroll taxes is one of them. You know, did you know that? When you're put, when you have, when your employees are on payroll, not only do the taxes get taken out of their checks, but you have to match that tax as an employer. You know that's something that people don't know. You know we pay thousands of dollars a year in payroll, in payroll taxes and payroll fees. You know those are little things that you didn't account for. It's not just rent. It's not just uh, electricity. It's not just water. It's not just cable, internet. It's it's all the little things. What about the marketing? What about the appointment system that costs? 20 or 30 bucks, especially if you have a few different barbers. What about the credit card fees? That, that in itself right there is, is, a good, is a good amount of money. There's all these little things that nobody tells you when you're opening up your own business. And you just think that, okay, you know, this guy's doing so well and my owner is terrible. And I'm opening up my own down the street. Listen, that's great. And I hope you succeed. But you definitely need to know what you're getting yourself into because it's not exactly what everyone thinks it is right off the right right from the jump and you got to have patience if you if you want to get into business you want to do really well right in the beginning that's something that's going to kill you rather than hurt you 
and and don't mistake patience with having a drive to work hard you can work really really hard but still have patience and and believe in in yourself and your brand that doesn't necessarily so what patience means is hey when you first open some of your clients might not follow you over to your new shop when you first open you might not be able to get a new employee to work for you when you first open you, you your, your, your shop might be really slow for a few weeks or a few months and then what's gonna happen the bills are gonna start coming in you're gonna have to pay this guy that guy and for your employees to stay you got to pay them so these are different things you have to figure out and you have to know ahead of time and if you don't know that stuff then that's that's what's gonna make you feel like you're not succeeding and it's gonna make you give up and then you're gonna stop showing up to work as, as much because you think you're the owner you don't really have to show up that much but in reality you do have to show up more especially when you're not doing well so these are these are just things that I don't know I feel like a lot of barbers don't understand and uh, and it's okay no one says Curry they the should head. understand it especially if they you know have worked in a shop their whole lives you know there's no reason as to why you should understand it so just make sure you get educated on it before don't make a move without knowing what you're what without knowing what the move is gonna be about I don't understand why business owners why shop owners don't sell product either it just makes no sense to me when I hear about shops that they don't have any products on the shelves or, or I, I'll ask the barbers like hey you know what kind of products does your shop sell and they'll be like oh we don't sell products or oh the owner doesn't want to do that I just don't get it you know people need product in their hair in order for them to style it the way that you style it so why not offer those products at a really good margin by the way because usually with products you're making double the money from what you bought it for if you buy a product for ten dollars you could sell it for twenty if you buy it for five you're selling it for ten it just makes no sense to me as to why these barbers and shop owners wouldn't think of that and say wait, wait a second a haircut costs twenty five dollars but I could also make another ten or fifteen dollars profit if I just sell them this little puck of wax or if I sell them this shampoo or if I sell them this gel or this hairspray I just don't I don't understand why they're lacking that and when I bring it up to them and I tell them about it they still seem to shut it down like they don't get you can make thousands more thousands more a year just in selling product Is our Caldwell location? We just opened it two months ago. It's a uh, center of town. We love this location. And uh, come on in. The second thing is, what's up, guys? Come on back to the office. See like this guy, like he's like, he, he's, he's telling me how, you know, I cut non-stop six days a week, you know, I'm always cutting, I never even get a break to eat lunch, he's like, and at the end of the week I'm not making money, and I'm like, so I asked him, I said, well, you know, what exactly, what exactly are you, my bad, my hands get dry when it gets cold, what exactly are you like, how, how long are your haircuts? How much are you charging for a haircut? And he's like, oh, I like to be really detailed. You know, I said, all right, cool. That's awesome, it's okay to be detailed. How, how much do your haircuts cost? He's like, oh, they're $20. And how long do your haircuts take? They take about an hour. So, of course you're gonna feel busy because you're taking an hour on a haircut. If you cut 10 hours a day, that's 10 cuts you're doing, but you've been working all day long, but all you made was $200. And maybe with tip, Maybe if everybody tipped you five dollars a piece, you're making fifty bucks. So in a day, you're making two hundred fifty dollars, but you feel like you work like crazy. Like that's why I feel like a lot of these barbers don't understand. Like, if you're gonna give quality, like detail, detail, quality, you have to up your price. Like there's just no in between. Like you shouldn't be charging twenty dollars to give an hour of your service away, an hour of your day away. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like if you're if you're gonna charge twenty dollars, that haircut better to be no more than fifteen minutes. Like our shops, we always pride ourselves on having really great, sharp haircuts. But what we notice is 15 to 20% of our clients are the only ones that really want those sharp, detailed haircuts and for you to take an hour on your hair. But honestly, the other 80% or 80 or 85%, 
are just guys that really want clean haircuts, great customer service. They want to get in and out without a big weight. And that's why they come to us. And they don't even care about the price that they pay. They're coming to us for quality and they're coming to us for professionalism and customer service. They're not coming to us because we're going to do really, really sharp lines. So, and that's, and that's how you make your money because honestly, as a barber, if you're doing, if you're doing three haircuts an hour at $20, you're doing way better than the guy that's doing one haircut an hour at $20. I mean, it's all about math. And what industry besides barbering can you really think of that if you cut your time in half, you're doubling your salary? I mean, it's just crazy. And guess what? I'll be honest with you. The more, the, the quicker you figure out how to do a sharp, clean haircut in faster time, the more they're going to tip you. Because I guarantee you, most of your clients do not want to be in that chair for more than half hour. And they're going to tip you more when you get them out in a quicker way. I'm telling you. It's just crazy. Like, I don't understand how these barbers don't realize that. And that's why I try and, that's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to train my new clients with. It's like, listen, guys, you don't have to. And if you're going to dedicate an hour on, on, on someone's hair, you better make sure you're charging for it. And if, you're, and if they're not going to pay, then they need to start walking. They need to go to another barber that is going to waste their time on an hour for 20 minutes, for $20. Another thing that I feel like barbers, like, or shop owners, they think that they have to do is they have to, like, they think that money is always going to motivate their staff. And what I realized in this industry is, and I think in any business, in any industry, is that money is not the main motivator. It's also about just making sure that you're kind of like there, there for them, you know, and you're understanding. Like in the sense of, uh, you can't manage everyone the exact same way. Because different people have different ways of dealing with things, you know, like, so the way you would tell one person something is not the same way you tell someone else something. For example, like, one of my guys, I might be able to be like, yo, what's up, man? That haircut could have been a little sharper, man. Like, make sure, you, you know, make sure you do a better job next time. And he could take it on the chin and be like, yeah, man, you're right. But then another guy, I kind of have to say it a little differently because he, he gets emotional a little more. You know what I mean? So I would have to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes, like, like, you can't just be tough with everybody, you know, and sometimes, and you can't be... And then the, the people that are tough, you can't be soft with them. You know what I mean? Because then they won't, they won't, they won't even respect you. You know, so you gotta have find that balance. You gotta kind of like know who your staff is and be like, all right, this guy is cool with me just getting on him. You know what I mean? And me being tough. It's kind of like when like people who can't take a joke, right? Like you know, when people can't really take a joke, you can't really joke with them. But the ones who could take a joke, you're busting their chops all the time. You know what I mean? You have that sort of relationship. Same thing with your employees. I feel like that's that's the biggest thing that uh, when you're managing someone, you have to kind of take into account is alright how do I have to relay this message to this person and how do I relay the same message to this person in a different way so that he can kinda like take it the right way and run with it you know if someone is a little on the softer side or a little has a little on the or a little more um, quiet you're not gonna be tough on him you know because he's not gonna be able to take that that well he's not gonna and, and all he's gonna do is he's gonna he's gonna kinda hate you for that you know so when it comes to managing I just feel like people need to to really think about that and think about how am I going to relay this message.